Thank you very much indeed. Uh, you probably have some idea of what a great pleasure it is for me to be back in Britain. I'd just like to tell you it is a great pleasure. And uh, I'm really enjoying myself here. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the band, actually, before we do this. We've got Sylvia Woods here, who normally plays the Celtic Harp. She's sitting over there in the corner. We've got Jerry McMillan on the fiddle and viola. And Chris Caswell on the flute and whistle. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to uh, do you a, a newish song. Funny, it doesn't sound new. Uh, this is a song that relates to my school days, which in every way were uh, singularly ordinary, actually. I went to a singularly ordinary school, which at that time featured the singularly ordinary practice of having compulsory military training. <laughs> so we learned to fire such wonderful weapons as the good old British Mark IV Lee and Enfield rifle, which has a range of about five miles and ends the necessity of ever going to see a chiropractor. All you have to do is just fire off of the other shoulder and snaps your neck right back into place. <laughs> we also fired the Sten gun, the Bren gun, fabulous things. No use for knocking tin cans off of walls, though. All right for shooting at walls if you're not too far away. <laughs> we used to get um, sent over to Northern Ireland there in the summer, just the right place for schoolboys, <laughs> uh, off to a place along the shores of Loch Foyle, not far from Derry. And... Um, this song relates to that. It was a fabulous army camp, though, I must tell you, it really was great. I mean, the washing facilities alone are worth mentioning. There was a wooden trough, you see, about 30 feet long, which sloped from the high end down to the low end. You all lined up beside the, the trough, you know, and at the command, wash, you started washing as the sergeant turned on the tap right at the high end. The water ran down from the high end to the low end. You got up near the tap, you got water got down in the low end, you got Pepsodent and snot. <laughs> Looks like water, but it's snot. The Carsey was pretty good too. A nice long ditch dug in the ground there with a plank over the top and about 10 holes drilled in it. The sight of 10 soldiers squatting there in the dawn with the sun behind them was highly poetic, let me assure you. At age 14 they gave us training To number off by threes and give salutes To clean and fire the Lee and Enfield To answer smartly, sir, and shine the boots And me and all of the other poor bastards Glengarry bonnets on the bugle call I never thought I looked good and cocky It hurt the pride as well as it scratched the balls I volunteered for the signal section To work the radios was a skyver's joy And on the newvers I'd twist the orders And put confusion on the soldier boy Summer training near to Loch Foyle, not far from Derry Town, to get a feel of the regular army and generally act the bloody clown, to eat melodious beans and gravy, to sleep on old grey blankets if with stains and on the carsey in the morning, to squat in rows like cows with labour pain. Um, me and some lads broke out one evening Climbed through the wires and down the lock beside We spied some fishers in their long boats Casting nets out on the silvery tide We soon pulled shoreward and we got to talking To row us over the water they agree They hoist us dry shot in the boat beside them And away across the watery waves went we Cross to green castle and southern Set end to end a couple of churches and several boozers For we fell to drinking with our Irish friends Had 
da Belvy, there as drunk as lords and old skylarking and cutting capers. Till that old church clock it chimed for four, the fishers rowed us back over the water and went to fish upon the morning rise. But we were drunk and devoid of caution, and we were halted climbing back through the wires. And me and the lads, we were all defaulted, and straight away upon fatigues were led to double at our every duty. We I got infected in both the ears, some kind of hole in the two of my eardrums, till not a single order could I hear. I sadly smiled and I looked downhearted, while they could curse and shout and rage, and that's the way I would end a story when I was fourteen years of age. 